Hello and welcome to the informational video on the bonus section of Scatterplot. We have not worked on a Scatterplot in class. It's a more advanced uh, graph that you might have seen in the news or in sports or in business before. So this might be your first experience with it and that's why it's in a bonus section but something you'll see in a future year of math as well. We're going to open ourselves first to uh, check out a graph that I just grabbed online. This is regarding NBA uh, win percentage versus the point differential, which is a statistic measure you can find in the standings when you take a look at it. So you kind of take each team, uh, which they did it over a few year spans, so that's why there's a lot of them. So like all 30 teams for 10 years, you see a lot of dots on the scatter plot. And basically you graph where each team kind of stands. So you match up their point differential, which you can find in the standings, compared to what percentage of games they won. And then you can see if you develop some sort of line, like is it trending upward, which this one definitely is. Is it trending downward? Is it trending straight across? Or is there no trend and everything is scattered around? The trend is known as a correlation. So this one leaning up is known as a positive correlation. One leaning down is known as a negative correlation. And if there's no lean, then it's just known as no correlation. You can't make a general statement. What we're looking for you to do is to create a scatter plot and to make a general statement. The example for this statement would be the higher the point differential, the more games that the team will win. So you kind of compare both axes. That may be confusing for some people, so we'll do two examples here to help you create it using some statistics that are more common to sixth grade students. So here's my example. I randomly took a survey here of the minutes studying for a test the day before a test compared to a student test grade. So a student who studied no minutes for the test, so they didn't study the day before, they earned a 75. Another student didn't study, earned an 80. They got a B, great. Um, one person studied five minutes, earned an 82. You know, somebody who studied 15 here got an A. Okay, somebody who studied a bit ended up getting a B. You know, you can see that. Somebody got 100. But when you fill in your data here, you need to make sure that they match up, which they do in our data charts that we gave you. So you need to link that it's the same student in the same row, which it'll match up. So like this student who studied zero earned a 75. So you need to make sure it matches up. You can't just randomly assign them. So once you do this, to create a scatter plot, you are going to highlight the data you want to go in the scatter plot. You're going to go to insert chart. This is just like the histogram task. It defaults to the line chart for most of the time, but when you go here, you can search around and look for scatter plot. And notice there it is with those dots, they call it a scatter chart. When you click on it here, it will now create the scatter chart where that person who studied zero minutes and earned a 75 is represented by the dot right here. Studied for zero minutes day before the test earned a 75. That person got 100 who studied a half hour is noted right here. If I go to 30 minutes, there's my person who got 100. There's another dot there because somebody else who studied for 30 minutes got a 94. So, There's another dot there because somebody else who studied for 30 minutes got a 94. But using this, we can kind of tell the trend. You would think the more you study, the higher the test grade would be. That's not true for everybody, but you would think in general that will happen. But a scatter plot usually helps you defend that argument. So we're going to take a look at how to actually look at it. But first, I want to remind you to go over to Customize, and that's where you can jazz up your scatter plot. The thing you definitely need to do is to add chart and axis titles. So remind you, you can fix up the title here and the horizontal, the X, the vertical Y axis you can change there. Google will actually recognize what it thinks you want as your um, axis titles if you write it in here. But you can edit it if you would like. You know, that's not really written so great. 
So you can always fix that there. You can add colors. One thing we mentioned in the histogram one is that you can change your intervals and how it works. Notice here these dots kind of look like they're going off the top and there's no data down below and that's because nobody scored below a 75 on this test. So this graph isn't great because we have all this empty space. Everything's like cluttered up here and kind of falling off the top. So I could go to my vertical axis here and then I could redo a minimum and maximum. Since my lowest grade is 75, maybe I want my minimum to be like 60. Okay, and then up to 100 because I know 100 is the maximum grade. Or maybe I want to start my graph at 70. So notice now we kind of have a better look here because now it's not all at the top. And now the question is, is our hypothesis concluded? Like the more you study, does your grade go up? Now, hopefully you can kind of see that the lower minutes have lower grades, but the higher minutes have higher grades. And this is trending upward if you look at it this way. That's called a positive correlation. So once you've fixed up your chart to be exactly what you want it to be, you add color, make sure your titles are there. You're going to do the same thing like you did in the histogram part. You're going to press control C to copy. You're going to paste it into the project and you need to write a correlation statement. In this example, I would write the more you study, the higher students test grade tends to be. Yet again, you kind of put like tens. It's not always true, but it's true pretty often and you can see it in the data that we have here. So notice the more you study, so the higher study minutes has points that are higher up over here, which are higher grades. So that would be one example. I'm going to show you a second example of a negative correlation. And I did another random survey where I compared the amount of minutes a student spent on their phone to their test grade, especially the day before a test. So this person who wasn't on their phone scored a 96. This one who spent some time on their phone scored a 100. You know, and you can kind of figure out, remember, they must match up. Just like when you create yours, your people need to match up. Otherwise, this won't work. So as we did, you're going to highlight the data you want. You're going to go to insert chart. And this one defaulted to a scatter plot because I had already created one on the same sheet. But if you need to change it, it's always in setup where you can, if it defaulted to a line graph. You can always go to customize. We said you always want to put a title, label, fix the colors. You may adjust your your axes. Notice here my lowest grade I think is an 80. So I really have no real good reason to have 0 through 80 on here. So I may want to fix up my vertical axis a little bit. And maybe start it, I don't know, around maybe 75. Maybe I want to go a little bit higher so I can see it. Okay. And now the question is, can you determine its correlation? Is there one? To me here, the lower numbers are up higher. It's the reverse of last time. Then it's kind of dropping a little bit where it's going. Even though this one's a little bit higher, this one seems a little out of place, which means this person spent a lot of time on their phone and still did really well. But in general, you can kind of see the more minutes you spend on your phone the day before a test, the lower your test grade is. And that would be the correlation statements, the sentence that you need to write in your project if your project was on comparing minutes on the phone to test grade survey. So I hope that helps you adjust it to what we're working on and you're able to create a scatter plot and then write a correlation statement, a full sentence, just like you heard here. This is definitely a tough one and if you have any questions, please contact your teacher.